And now we're going to try the same thing, but with um, what I believe is this 3B1's original hard drive. Um, now I've plugged the power into uh, the power for the floppy drive, which is connected here on the motherboard. And on the 3B1 model, there is no power. There is no power plug that comes off the motherboard. That's a feature from the original 7300 that was discontinued. I'll actually show you one. Here's a motherboard for 7300, and here is the power supply uh, cable for the for the hard drive. And you can see that that comes right off of the motherboard, just like the uh, power supply cable for the floppy drive does. But they removed that, and instead they took the floppy drive cable, uh, excuse me, the hard drive cable, directly off of the power supply somewhere here. Yes. I don't know what happened to it. I guess it's not connected at the moment. Or maybe this power supply wasn't from the 3P1. I'm not sure. I'm actually curious. I want to see. Oh, sure enough. That power supply was not from the 3B1. This power supply was actually from a 7300 that's been repaired. Because here's the power supply for the 3B1. And uh, it actually has this hard drive power cable that comes right off of that and then would reach over and power the power uh, power the hard drive directly. Evidently the huge hard drive took too much current and I think it eventually I don't know it was too much current to go through the motherboard for and I guess there was failures um, of some kind. So I've heard from those experts that used these things back in the day. Um, mostly the Oracle of the Unix PC, who comments com constantly on comp.sys.3b1, which I usually access using Google Groups. Anyway, let's power this thing up and we will see what happens. Here we go. Plugging it in now. And it's spinning up. Oh, wow, it actually boots. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Oh, listen to that thing. The background music seems appropriate for it. It's fairly ominous. Alrighty. All right. So far, so good. That's the way it's supposed to sound. When you have a physical hard drive, that is. Yes, and it's doing a reboot, which I would expect. That's very common if it was powered off uh, without actually being shut down properly, that it goes through the sequence at least once. So that's no surprise to me. Even, you know, if I...
power off the emu powered off the Unix PC running on an emulated hard drive. It does exactly the same thing. Well, I guess because it's actually really behaving like a MFM hard drive, ST506 hard drive. It doesn't know it's not a physical drive. So it leaves the files in the incomplete state, I guess. Something like that. Something it doesn't like when it goes through that checking files. It says, ah, we're going to fix something and reboot this thing. There we go. Okay, now I have no idea if the login of root is going to work, so let's find out. Because this is actually the first time I've ever ran this uh, install from this hard drive, because I, this was in one of the Unix PCs that I bought. I think it actually came with this with this motherboard as well, in the chassis. And uh, it looks like, the, if I remember correctly, uh, this power supply is bad, and the, um, the monitor that was attached to is also bad. I've tested them independently. So evidently the uh, motherboard was fine and ironically the most vulnerable, vulnerable part, the hard drive was fine. So let's see what we get here. Password, huh? Really? <laughs> 90% of the storage space is available. Okay. Wow. Okay, root no password. Let's not do that. Let's do that instead. Huh. All right, we're going to try an install here. As the user to see if we can boot to um, the office GUI graphic user interface. And it seems to like it. <laughs> wow. Oh look, I haven't seen one of this but one of these before. System 25 AAS. That's pretty cool. I've got to image this thing and get it running on an emulator. That would be cool. I think that is what I'm going to do as my very next thing. Configuration demo. I've never seen this before. Wow. Turning purposes and for changing AAS's PC configuration form. Uh, some screens will not be accessible while in this mode. Copyright notice, of course. Function keys. I still have absolutely no idea what this means, but I'm going to escape to lose the help. Oh, look at this. Main menu for System 25 administration. Well, why don't I, I'm just going to hit exit. Although, this is definitely a telephony thing. Voice station, trunks, groups, data resources. Let's hit escape. Or exit, I should say. Oh my gosh. Do I really want to quit? Press submit to go ahead or cancel to cancel. Where's submit? Wait a minute. I don't know. Do I have a submit button here somewhere? <laughs> submit. S 
select input. <laughs> well, I'm going to hit enter. How's that? Is that submit enough for you? How about return? It is not return, nor is it enter. Oh, wait. F3 is submit, and F4 is cancel. There we go. <laughs> All right, F3. There we go. Okay, excellent. Now we can exit. And what I really want to do is check the system. Um, go to administration here and system and see what we get. System information. All right. This is a different software package that I don't actually have install disks for, so I'm definitely going to image this. This is very cool. System name, disk free space. Um, I'm surprised that that much is available. I would expect the memory to be the same because it's the same physical hardware configuration. Communication patch version, Unix PC curses, term info, and uh, encryption set 3.51. Well, it's, you know, encryption set. I'm so glad they used an encryption set but like left the password as null on root or Null on install. <laughs> okay. It seems pointless, but maybe that was one of those things you had to install for this, and maybe it doesn't encrypt this thing, it encrypts some kind of communication. Good question. I'm just guessing now. If anybody knows, please let me know uh, in the comments section on YouTube. I'd love to hear that. But anyway, communications patch. Fantastic. Love it. Oh, wait, I guess there. Oh, there, look, there's more. System 25 Advanced Administration Release. So it looks like these four things are installed, which is different than the things that I have installed on um, on this particular, the image that I have loaded on this emulator right here. Okay. Well, I think we should uh, shut down and image this hard drive using the MFM emulator reader and create an image from this so that in the event that this physically fails, uh, we save what's on there. I think that would be kind of cool. So let's do that. Oh, I think I hit suspend. Let's exit there, exit there, exit there. And I think I want to hit the command button. And we'll scroll down to shut down and enter. And this should do a clean shutdown. Do I want to perform a system shutdown? I absolutely want to perform a system shutdown. Okay, power off to reset the machine, or press return to reboot. I'm going to pull the plug. All right, let's image this hard drive now. And I thank you for watching.